Hello everyone, it's Jill the Wandering Stamper. Today we're gonna to get into the fall spirit and I'm hoping that'll bring some cooler weather. And we're going to make this fun little pop out accordion fun fold card using the pick of the patch stamp set that is in the new holiday winter cattle mini catalog. So that came out uh, September 6th. So if you haven't uh, looked at it, take a look because things will definitely sell out. This is such a cute uh, fold. It's not that hard and it's fun to be creative with. So let's get started and I'll show you how to make this card. Look how super cute this card is using these suite of products. There's really nothing fancy about it. It's simply a bunch of cuts and punches, but when you stand this card up, it's so cute. And you can stand it up two ways. I like to stand it up so the two inside flaps are behind the middle but it looks just as cute with them on the outside. So very easy card to fold up. And then when you wanna put it in an envelope, you just simply fold the two halves inward and it fits in your standard envelope. Super cute card, so let me show you how to make it. So first we're gonna get our paper cutter and we are gonna cut two pieces of Calypso Coral. I am using, I'm actually using Calypso Coral, very vanilla, and this is the Inked Botanicals Designer Series paper. Um, I feel like it has a nice little fall vibe to it, so I've picked out these papers, which look like fall leaves. So we're gonna work with that, which is why I chose the Very Vanilla and the Calypso Coral, because that matches beautifully with this um, card. So as I mentioned, we're gonna get the Calypso Coral out and we're gonna cut two sheets four by eight. So what I like to do is pull the arm out so I can cut this full sheet. I'll cut eight inches. And then, get this arm out of the way so you can see what I'm doing. And then I'll turn it and cut two pieces four inches wide. One. And two. So two pieces. Two pieces, four by eight. And then you're gonna score each piece at two inches, four inches, and six inches. You're gonna do that for both pieces. So two inches, four inches, and six inches. All right. Now, the next thing we're gonna do, and the easiest way, is to stack the two together. And we're going to put it back in our cutter. Make sure your two layers are, are together. And then put that at the two inch line. And then you wanna get a pencil with a deep lead and just put a little tick mark right there. Flip it over and do the same thing for the other side. Put it at the two inch mark, close your cutter, and put another tick mark, all right? So you have a tick mark here and a tick mark here. If it helps you, go ahead and put a tick mark on each of your score lines, just, just on the top score lines, the, uh, the ones on the end, the first score lines on each end. So now what we're gonna do is take our paper cutter and we're gonna cut away these corners. So you're gonna line your tick marks up and cut. Okay, and I'm gonna do that for the other side. This is what is so wonderful about the Stampin' Up! paper cutter is because it has the clear arm, this is really easy to do. Do that. And then we're gonna do the same thing for the other end to make sure your paper's lined up. 
and line up your hash your tick marks cut them off and then the last part okay and then you also ensure that everything is exactly the same now if you want you can erase these little lines so they don't show up later this pencil is so good it has a very a soft lead and an excellent eraser so it's really easy to get rid of all these marks all right so this is what we have we have two pieces that look just like this so we're gonna set that aside a moment put all these scraps aside and then the next thing we're gonna do is cut very vanilla and this very vanilla uh, is going to be cut at one and seven eighths by three and seven eighths, and we're going to cut six six of them. So I'm going to do one and seven eighths. I'm just going to do two strips. One and seven eighths, and then three and seven eighths long. I'm going to do six. I'm just doing, I'm doing two at a time. My blade is nice and sharp. It's new. Uh, if your blade is sharp, you can usually cut two pieces at once. So there's four. And then we need one more strip. One and seven eighths by three and seven eighths. All right, so we have six of these. We're going to set those aside. And then the next thing we're going to do is get our designer series paper that we're going to use on the back, on the back part of the card. So I'm using this. And that is going to be one and three quarters by three and three quarters. And you're going to need four. So one and three quarters. I actually have, I think, this one left over. I had a scrap, so I'm going to use that. You want a total of four and then we're going to cut these three and three quarters long okay so we have one two three four we're gonna set those aside gives you not lots of nice little scraps for another project because I'm all about those scraps and the next thing we're going to cut is the, are the pieces for our diamond. So we're going to get our Calypso coral out again, and we're going to cut squares, 2 and 7 eighths by 2 and 7 eighths. And we're going to need three of those. So this is the rest of that sheet of paper that we cut our base on. Oh, what did I say? 2 and 7 eighths by 2 and 7 eighths. So that's one. and I don't have any more scraps I don't think so we'll do another one two and seven eighths by two and seven eighths so three of those we'll set those aside and then the next layer is going to be the very vanilla again, and we're going to be cutting those two and three quarters by two and three quarters. Let's see, this might actually be long enough. I'm using my scraps. That's actually a little short, so we're not going to use that. All right, two and three quarters. I'll do one more. 
so we've got three quarters. How many did I say we needed? We needed three, I believe. How many did I cut? Three. One more. Okay. So we've got three of those. And then finally, we want to cut our designer series paper for the front portion, which I'm using this design and that is going to be two and five eighths by two and five eighths and we'll need three So that's everything for our cutting for our layers. So we're going to set this paper cutter aside, get all the paper out of it. All right, so now the fun part. So first you want to get your two layers. I'm going to get some of my scraps out of the way here so you can see what I'm doing. So we're getting our two layers and we're going to grab our bone folder and I'm going to grab my pencil. Okay. So the first thing we want to do is fold these two corners inwards and use our bone folder and give it a nice little burnish. Do the same thing for the other. These two pieces are going to be attached right here and this is going to make the center of our card. Okay? So we're going to flip this over and if you have washi tape you can use that. Um, I like to use this post-it label and cover-up tape. I have it linked to my crafter must-haves. I love this tape. I use it in my die cutter. Um, it also works good to keep pieces on the back straight. So we've got that. While that's attached, I'm going to go ahead and fold my outside pieces in as well and give them a little burnish. Okay. Now. The next thing we're going to want to do is grab one of our middle pieces here. We'll be layering it together with all three of these like this. So the first thing I'm going to do is use my liquid glue and I'm only going to put liquid glue on these flaps here. Pull that out of the way. And this is to make sure you don't, don't ooze over the sides, so don't get too ambitious, don't get too close to the edge, but just put a nice little layer of liquid glue down. The liquid glue is super strong. And then we're going to layer this piece over the middle, just like so. And so now, just give it a moment to dry. So now our two pieces of card are attached. So you can go ahead and take this piece off and I just stick it right back onto my cover up tape dispenser and it's ready to use later. Okay, so that's our middle. And then we're going to go ahead and fold these inwards. Make sure I did that right, yes. Like this and give them a nice little burnish with the bone folder and do the same thing for the inside, just fold, fold the middle out of the way. Okay, so when you open it up, that's how your card is going to sit. All right, so now while we have that open and pretty blank, we're gonna go ahead and get out our rectangular pieces that we cut earlier and get my, silicone craft sheet so I don't make a mess and we're going to be gluing 
these onto the uh, berry vanilla. I want to I want to say basic white because I usually work with basic white, but today we're doing berry vanilla because it goes so well. So you just want to put these panels on as straight as possible. And I'm just using a little stamp and seal plus. And of course, if you're using a different designer series paper, just make sure if you're directional, you're doing it the, the right direction. You could also use a paper that has a scene on it. Just cut the scenes in order. It should work just fine. So we have six of these very vanilla rectangles. Two of them are gonna go on the back for writing your message. So that's why you have six instead of four. I added two extra because I'm out. Why does this always happen when we are stamping together? Always seems to need a refill when I'm stamping <laughs> with you. Okay, back in business. All right, back to business. I like to always write messages, and this paper, the Calypso Coral, is light enough to just write on, but I like to go that little extra bit and decorate the back too. So now we have these four pieces. We're gonna be doing the same thing. We're going to add our adhesive to the back of this layer. And then by, you know, get the, uh, all the pieces out of the way and then you're going to very carefully layer this on the back get it as centered as possible make sure you don't go over your folds because you want it to fold nicely so you don't want to get it over any of your score lines keep it out of the way of your score lines and then I like to make sure that I'm lining my bottoms and my tops up nicely. Okay. Now we're going to flip it over and do the same thing over here. So now our middle is ready to be decorated. All right, so the next layers are for the two outside triangles. So we're gonna go ahead and layer our paper. So I'm putting the designer series paper on top of the very vanilla. And then the very vanilla on top of the Calypso Coral. We're pulling all our colors in nicely together. That's what I love about Stampin' Up! is everything matches so nicely that it makes it makes you look like a pro. Like you have a very color forward eye and I am not good at picking colors so I love that you can simply look on the back of the pack of Designer Series paper and it gives you a list of all the colors that coordinate with that paper so your cards always look fantastic. All right, so now we're going to, oh, we have actually one more. We're gonna be layering these two as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and put some adhesive on the back of this. And then flip this over. So I'm going to start with my middle because it's right here front and center and I'm going to layer this one okay and then I'm going to use some adhesive just on the outside of the flap 
And then I'm going to place this directly over my fold and it should line up nicely like that. And then we're going to do the same thing over here. So it looks complicated, but it's really not. It's pretty easy. Once you make one, it makes a lot of sense. All right, so now we're going to do the same thing over here. I'm just laying this square over top like so. All right, so we've got our three layers. So now it's time to start decorating. So before we start decorating, I do want to mention we're going to be putting the back message back here. So if you're wondering where that goes, it's going to go on the back on the back of the card. We're going to set those aside for a moment and we're going to start building the front. So the pick of the patch set, so, so cute. It comes with all of these pumpkins. Um, you've got Halloween, so you can cover basically Halloween and fall Thanksgiving. So it also comes as a bundle and coordinates with this punch. And the punch will punch out the medium and large pumpkins, the larger leaf and the pumpkin top. So you can either stamp, you can punch out the paper and stamp on top, or you can just stamp and then punch out each individual piece, whatever works for you. I went ahead and already punched and, and stamped these out, but I wanna show you really quick how I did that. So let me grab one of these out. And there's not a die for each one, but the ones that don't have a die, you can just fussy cut with your, your um, scissors, super easy to do. So I'm going to grab a block over here and we're gonna use Calypso Coral. So I'm stamping tone on tone. So I'm gonna stamp this pumpkin in Calypso Coral. Let's get the silicone mat out of the way. Okay, just like that. And then you can just feed him right into your punch. A lot of the time I'll trim away a lot of the paper, but I just wanna show you really quick how easy it is. So I just line my pumpkin up. And if you get close to where you want it, if you push down just a little, it'll hold your paper tight. You can take a look and then just punch it out. So there's our pumpkin. I happen to also punch out this little guy when I did that, which is great because you know what you can do is grab that little pumpkin. So if you want it, I sometimes find it easier to punch them and, and then stamp them. So you can totally do it that way it works. And you just center your, because you can see through these stamps, just center your stamp over the paper and do it that way too. So both both ways works really well. And the, then the way to, that I created the little stems, cleaning my stamp really quick, just off screen. I just grab a scrap of pecan pie and then just feed that in there right at the edge and punch it out. And I just punch out however many I need. So there's your little stem how dirty my fingers are already from stamping and then I get glue dots and you could use either end um, and just put a glue dot there and I usually put the glue dot on the bottom of whatever end I want to use sometimes I want a, a fatter stem sometimes I want a skinnier stem and then you just pop it on there wherever you want it really really simple and then you can also punch and stamp out the little leaves um, lots of lots of fun things to do with that. So I just wanted to show you that really quick. All right, so I've already cut ours out to save us a little time. And then I also want to show you, I used the, the where are they? The Deckled Circles dies. I love these. These are in the Holiday Mini Catalog. Look how many circles you get. I used these two, I'd, I'd call them medium ones. It goes all the way up to these really big ones. So I love these dies because you get so many options and they kind of can take on wood. They're kind of wavy, um, really versatile. So check those out. They're a really good set of circle dies. So that's what I used. I created a layer of Lost Lagoon and Very Vanilla to keep 
pulling in our colors. So I'm gonna go ahead and do a little bit of stamping. So what I like to do is keep my color coordination. So I've got Calypso Coral, Crushed Curry, and Lost Lagoon. These are the three colors in my paper. So what I'm gonna do is give this a little bit of extra. I'm going to first stamp my greeting, which says, you're the pick of the patch. And I'm doing that in Lost Lagoon. So I'm gonna ink that up and stamp that toward the top, just like that. And then, while I have this one out, I'm gonna, there's a, a leaf die that has three leaves, so I ink them up and then stamp off, because I don't want it to be bright. I just want it to be a subtle little set of leaves and just put some here and there. Stamp off the edge if you want. Okay, so I put a couple of those on there and I'm gonna close this up. And then I'm gonna grab my Calypso Coral and I'm gonna do the same thing. Clean these off. And then I'm gonna take my Calypso Coral, stamp off. So it kind of looks like leaves, fall leaves just kind of floating down. And it sort of coordinates with this paper too, which also has a fall, fall leaf design. So I just kind of go around the page and add them wherever I want to, like that. Close that up. And then the last color I'm gonna use is the Calypso, or the uh, Crushed Curry. Because we've got Crushed Curry in our paper as well. And I feel like these look nice and fall. There we go, that looks good to me. All right, so that's done. So now I'm going to get my craft sheet out and I'm gonna adhere this circle to my other circle. Like so. And then I'm gonna start building my pumpkins. So I went ahead and cut out some pumpkins. I've got this guy. Oh, this guy doesn't have a stem. So I know I punched a stem out somewhere. Where did it go? All right, well, we're gonna punch another stem. All right, here he is. So again, I'm gonna get my glue dots and pop one on here. All right, so I like to just kind of decide where I'm gonna place everything. So I'm going to use all of these and these. So I'm only gonna use dimensionals on a couple, so I'm gonna start out by putting my biggest pumpkin down. It's just how I decided to lay them out. So I'm gonna put a little adhesive, make sure nothing's sticking out. And I think I'll put him about right here. And then I'm going to add this little guy over here, and then I'll start layering. So I'll put him here and then I'm going to grab my dimensionals I think I'm going to add this one with dimensionals to give it a little bit of height and I'm going to use one small up here and then a couple of larger ones like so those papers off and then whoop, just decide where I want to put him. I think I'll put it right here. And then I have this little guy. I felt like we needed to pull in some of the crushed curry. So I'm 
going to grab a large dimensional and just pop that on the back and find a place for this one. I think it's going to go here like that. And then I want to add my leaves. So I cut out two leaves. So I think I'll put one here. And I kind of just look and see where I want to put them. So I'm going to put a dot of glue here. Put a leaf right there. Perfect. And then on this one, I'm going to put my glue. I just figure out where I want it to stick. I put a little glue there. Now, because he's going to hang off a little, I think I'm going to add a little mini dimensional to this side. I hope that works. Yeah. So I'm just kind of figuring out where that dimensional starts. There we go. So he's going to go on the pumpkin, but he's not going to get smushed over here where he's hanging off. So I kind of made him look like he has a little bit of height to him. All right, so super cute. And then I'm going to grab this Calypso Coral braided linen thread. I love this thread. And I'm just going to create a little bow. I'm not very good at bows. I don't think that's ever been a very strong skill set of mine, that's for sure. So I just kind of keep pulling it until I like I like the size and then I give it a little trim. And then I'm going to add a glue dot and put it right here. So we're, we're continuing to pull those fun products together and I love, love, love the coordination. So there is our glue dot and I'm just going to place it at the top of this. And then if you need to adjust your ribbon, you can make it just a bit smaller. There we go. So cute. So now I want to add this to the front. You could simply glue it down, um, but I think I'm going to add some dimensionals and make it pop up a little bit, give it a little height. So I don't want to put them too far in the, in the corner because this is a triangle or a diamond shape middle. So I'm just going to put four of them right here, sort of toward the middle. And then I'm going to grab my card and just center that over like so. Look how pretty that is. Super, super cute. Now, you could leave your card just like this and it would be perfectly fine. It's so cute. But I think I'd like to add a few more embellishments. So I'm going to add these here. And I'm not going to use any dimensionals on these. I'm just going to glue them down. So I'm going to go ahead and put my adhesive on the back. Oh, pushed down too hard. So then you just want to layer those on. So put this one on first and then I think I'll put the tall one, push that in. I am shedding today like that and then we'll put this one in the middle and then over here I wanted to put in, pull in some more of that yellow. So I'm going to Actually, maybe I'll use this littler one because we haven't used one like that. So I'll put him maybe right there. And then put this here. What I love about this is you just can go with the flow and create whatever look you want. So there we go. So the front of our card is done. Look how cute. So, so cute. 
and sitting on the counter it just screams fall so pretty and you could even go a little step further and put some bling on this put something sparkly on here or add a little wink of Stella perfect uh, but now we're gonna go ahead and do the back so the way I enjoyed this uh, when I was playing around is there's one set of sayings that say a harving a harvest of blessings but I only wanted the word blessings so I'm putting the word blessings on my block and I'm only going to ink it up to I'm only going to ink the word blessing up so you just want to figure out where that starts and go ahead and ink that part up and I'm going to add that to I have to put my head in here I'm going to add that to the top so it says blessings I just like the simplicity of that you could put a whole entire message there if you wanted to but I just kind of liked how it was simple and then the other thing I decided to do is there is this fun little kind of tree, tree branch and we have falling leaves so taking that same technique that we did earlier on our um, fall leaves I'm gonna go ahead and do this. So what I did was I, I uh, stamped off so it's not bright and I did that in Lost Lagoon and then we're going to go ahead and do the same thing in Crushed Curry. I'll stamp off and then add some Crushed Curry and it's just continuing to pull those colors in which I love to do. And now we're going to do our Calypso Coral, same thing, right there. So it just kind of kept, it just added a little bit of color um, and pull, continues to pull in the card with everything that's in the designer series paper. All right, and then you want to add some more detail to the other sheet so it's not boring. We wouldn't want a boring card, right? So I'm grabbing the little board and I'm gonna stamp this one in Lost Lagoon. Just like that, simple, simple. You could also take your extra, any extra pieces you have um, cut out and just glue those on if you wanted to. But I'm doing it this way. Where's my little block? Here it is. I'm trying to keep things clean as I go because as soon as I forget to clean something, we will have a mess. All right, so this is the smallest pumpkin. And I'm going to use my Calypso Coral. I'm going to stamp that right here, like that. Just a nice little subtle color. And then in your stamp set, you have a pumpkin stem. It's very small, so you have to be careful not to, to lose it. So what I like to do with this is grab pecan pie. Pecan pie seems to be the, the perfect color to stamp this in. So we're gonna grab our pecan pie and ink that up. And then I just get a little piece of scrap paper and because I, I might not want my um, stem to be super long, so I just kind of mask it a little bit so it's not too long. So see how that worked? And then I'll do the same thing over here because you don't necessarily want it to be super long. Maybe on some of them you do. So there you go. So now, instead of it being super long, I was able to control how long it is. So that's that. And I think that's plenty of detail on those. So I'm gonna go ahead and set that aside. And then we're gonna add our adhesive to the back. I think the next card I'm going to make with this set is a Halloween card. There is a really cute crow on this set. 
um, if you see, and there's a little Halloween face, a pumpkin face, and a crow, and a branch. So I'm going to do a, I think I'm going to be doing a Halloween card with this too. And I will post a picture of that card in my blog with the where the instructions for this card will be. So you'll be able to see that. So what I'm doing is just adhering the back, the layers to the back, and then this will be the perfect place to put your greeting, write a message to the loved one who's getting this card. So here we go. Here's our card, all finished. Super cute. It will sit on the counter. I know you can't really see it very well um, from this direction, but it will basically sit like this, or it can sit like that. Either way, it stands up really nicely. As you can see, there's a place on the back for your message. And then to mail it, you just fold your two corners in. And if it's perfectly in your envelope, and if you'd like, you could even do a little bit of stamping. Um, this stamp set does come with some little dots and you could put some textured dots in there as well. So let me know what you think about this card. I think it's super cute. It's the perfect card for fall, for Thanksgiving. I think this will probably be my Thanksgiving card that I will send to my family and friends. Um, and I hope it will be something that you enjoy making too. I will have all of the instructions um, linked below on my blog. It'll have all the cutting instructions plus all of the materials that I use to create this card. There'll be a link to my online store as well. And if you want to see more of these videos, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and give me a like if you love this card. I post videos every Wednesday and I can't wait to post some more uh, card designs with this fun patch. I hope you have a fabulous day and I hope you get a chance to craft today.